you want to talk about something hotly anticipated. It's a mobile chipset that runs fast, but doesn't use a lot of power. I don't think that anybody would argue with the fact that Intel and AMD have been struggling with that for a long time. I mean, M1, Max, super low power. Uh, okay, okay. The UM790 Pro is a mobile processor in a mini PC form factor. And I don't know why, but the volume of affiliate sales that we've been getting from people that want to buy or, or are buying mini PCs is over the top. And the 7000 series mobile CPUs from AMD are basically no compromises. They are basically desktop level performance, at least desktop level performance as of about a generation ago. We don't recommend customers remove the CPU cooler by themselves. There's a liquid metal sealing tightness warning service not provided by damage caused by improper disassembly. Don't take these apart, you don't need to. At least not that far apart. You can replace the SSDs and RAM on models that support it, but oh my goodness, look at that. All right, for our front IO, we've got a reset button, a physical power button, USB 4, USB 4, and a combination headphone microphone jack. On the other side, we've got a 19 volt power input, dual HDMI, 2.5 gigabit LAN, and four 10 gigabit type A ports. So this platform is not lacking for connectivity. In the box, we have a 120 watt power brick, our power cable, a standard length HDMI cord, spare rubber feet, and a Visa mounting bracket. Inside, it's a big change. First, you don't have to remove the screws, it just snaps together. We've got our Wi-Fi antennas that are mounted in the bottom of this, and we've got not one, but two M.2. Two 256 gigabyte M.2 and a RAID 0, these are PCIe Gen 4. And then we have 16 gigabytes of a user upgradable DDR5-5600. Now I know what you're thinking. Darn it, it doesn't have any display port. It does, it's the USB 4 on the, on the front. Those will work just fine in alt mode. Or even with the USB-C plus power delivery, level one text KVM. Wow, that's so quiet I can't even hear it. Dang! So how are we looking in terms of mini PC performance? Well, switching to a metal case has really paid off for minis for them. It runs cooler, quieter, feels a lot more sturdy. And the performance is there. I mean, this is basically better out of the box performance than an 11900K. Single thread and multi-thread at a tiny, tiny fraction of the power. We're idling at 11 watts on the desktop. And that's probably because I'm running 4K and OBS capture. Over 2,500 single thread in Geekbench 6 and over 11,000 multi-core. The breakdown is pretty much as you'd expect. Our DNA 3 here coming in a little stronger than expected. Uh, for other devices that I've seen that are based on the RDNA 3, it's been a little bit of a mixed bag. Esports ready, uh, maybe not really esports ready. Seems to depend on the wattage and the configuration of the actual system. You could probably get away with some very light esports on the, the RDNA 3 that is built into the system, but I think it is far better suited for streaming gameplay from another more capable system. That said, uh, you know, for Mini's forum, they've also got the HX99G, which combined the, the mobile version of the 6600 plus another system. I really can't wait for them to update a system like that with this, with the latest 7000 series CPU, so that you get the best of both worlds. If I were looking for a compact gaming system, I would probably go with the HX99G because it's got all of the accoutrements, it's got the USB ports, and yeah, it's a little physically larger, but it's also got a dedicated GPU. This box is even smaller though, so there is that. The USB-C ports on the front, I would have liked to maybe have had one of those on the back, but they are full USB 4. What can you do with USB 4? Uh -huh, I'm glad you asked. Thunderbolt 4, if you want to add an eGPU with this system, you can. Thunderbolt 4 in 2023, however, is severely limiting. If you think you're going to be adding a good external GPU, you are sadly mistaken. I just want to add a four lane 6500. Oh no, no you don't. You don't, want, you don't even want to go that to the low end of the spectrum. A 6600 or a 6700 can achieve about 80% of native performance. So you could get 1080p gaming out of your Thunderbolt 4 connection here. It's not Thunderbolt, we can't call it Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt is an Intel technology. This is PCIe tunneling. It's a different thing that's done by AMD. There's not a Thunderbolt controller in there or anything like that. I know it's confusing because there are some AM5 motherboards that include an Intel Thunderbolt controller, but this is not that. This is actually AMD's own PCIe tunneling, which 
has the foundational elements to make it superior to other PCIe tunneling technologies in the market, but we're not quite there yet on the software side of things. We're getting pretty close though, because as you see, I didn't have to do anything special. Mini's forum has got the BIOS settings out of the box dialed in. They've learned, they've watched my videos, they've seen how everything comes together and it's just plug it in and they're like, yeah, we should probably do that before it leaves the factory. And bada bing, bada bang, bada boom, the GTX 1070 is working just fine. This 1070 is chosen specifically because of PCIe quirks and some other stuff like that. So it's, I'm, <laughs> there's some subtext here that you haven't been picking up on, but now I can share. And it's also a huge boon to home labbers because those Thunderbolt, the PCIe 4 connections, the PCIe tunneling part of it, you can use for direct machine to machine networking. That is built into the Linux kernel via Thunderbolt networking. And that code is getting some, some dust kicked off of it because, because of software reasons, it's really limited to about 10 to 15 gigabits per second. And so it's not really a lot faster than a 10 gigabit ethernet card, like real world, if you try to use it, it's got kind of a lot of CPU overhead but it can be as fast as about 25 gigabit with just a little bit of polish and tuning. That's something I've been working on for a few months. I don't know if I'm gonna be the first one to get the video out on that, but I'm pretty close. So you can build a little mini cluster of these, especially with two connections, you could have three of these that are all directly connected to another node in the system. So imagine that one Thunderbolt connection goes to one node and the other Thunderbolt connection goes to the other node. And then using the two empty Thunderbolt connections on each of the other nodes, they connect to themselves as well. And so every node has a single connection to every other node. This, this a cluster makes that you will always have a quorum of if one of them goes down. So that's very nice for a home lab setup. These with eight CPUs and 64 gigabytes of DDR5, you could run a redundant home lab on this to really set the world on fire. The two and a half gigabit ethernet for any kind of, uh, you know, public facing, user facing stuff will work fine. If you're gonna use, uh, you know, a network attached storage for iSCSI or NFS, you do have a dual M.2, so if you wanted to 3D print an adapter and run, say, an M.2 10 gigabit adapter for even faster SAN connections, you totally could. There's a lot of home lab options for this platform if you get really creative. And that'll probably be something a lot of people do as the cost of these platforms come down. Now, because this is a brand new platform, brand new chipset, this is what's shipping in laptops currently. It is a little bit of premium pricing, especially if you look at the other minis forum options that I've looked at in the past and been excited for but you get what you pay for. I mean, if I were gonna run a home lab today, I probably wouldn't splash out this kind of cash on something like this, but it does have all the features. I'd probably get something like the Minis Forum, the 5600H that we reviewed previously. It's six cores. I mean, the, the horsepower is, this is a night and day difference. Like if you use this as your daily driver and you use the other machine as a daily driver, this will feel like you're in the future because it's so much faster. But for a home lab type setup, you know, who cares if home assistant responds 0.2 seconds a little slower? I mean, it, it's not gonna matter for those kind of, of use cases. But if you're watching this video in the future, past 2023, and you've got a deal on these or this platform, yeah, it's there, it's got the goods. I really can't wait for 80 gigabit PCIe tunneling to come more in vogue and the standards are basically all there for that. Or even PCIe 5 signaling, we may skip four and go straight to PCIe 5, which would be four lanes, be about 160 gigabit or 16 gigabytes per second that would make a pretty reasonable interface for something like a 6700 xt radeon that would be great we need that yesterday or even optical interconnects i could go for optical interconnects i could ramble about this all day that's not what we're here for we're here to take a look at the minis forum machine see how it runs well eight cores metal case silent fan upgradable memory dual m.2 what's not to love because of the dual M.2, you do give up the option for SATA connectivity. It's nice to add, you know, four terabytes of inexpensive SATA SSD storage, as we have done in the past with Minis Forum machines, but you're not gonna have that option on this platform. I don't think it really matters though, because you've got 10 gigabit USB, and I've been experimenting with 10 gig USB enclosures, and you can get really good performance from 10 gigabit USB these days. You've also got the USB 4 connections on the front, so you don't have to use an enclosure like this. You can use one like the one from Cooler Master, which includes a built-in SATA bay. So you add your four terabyte SATA SSD there. Your GPU and your games go together as a logical unit. 
And so you don't have to have it on this. It makes a little more sense for a laptop versus you know this small form factor desktop machine. But if you needed a, a powerful desktop with portability, that's you know this is a laptop CPU, but this is a laptop CPU running as fast as the laptop CPU can be made. It's still an ultra portable system. And with a Visa bracket, you can basically build your own iMac, mount it to the back of a monitor. You're basically done. That's it. And that's pretty much it for a quick look at the UM790 Pro from the Venus series. Oh, one quick note about storage. Even though it comes with two 256 gig SSDs, they're not in any form of RAID. This is largely because AMD hasn't done anything special for their uh, software hardware RAID assist thing. So you can do AMD chips at RAID. There are BIOS options to enable that and you can go through the Windows installation to enable that, but I think it's probably wise of Mini's forum not to have done that on this platform because the options for the bootable AMD RAID are still kind of half-baked and this is a, a software limitation. Intel's VROC and VMD solution is uh, technologically superior but hobbled by the licensing requirements. Intel wants to charge you a little bit extra if you want to do anything other than RAID 0 with their VROC. But it is fortunate you can at least get RAID 0 for free on Intel platforms that support VMD and RAID 0. You're not really missing out on much overall on that though, because most of the perceived speed, like perceived speed of the system is down to latency. And you really want to put as little as possible in the chain that will increase the latency. You, you really want your operating system to be as close to your storage metal as possible, because the latency more than the throughput is what makes the machine feel snappy or not. And the higher the, uh, the, the, the performance feeling, the lower the storage latency. That's also why I'm really big on Optane. I'm Whittle, this level one has been a quick look at the UM790 Pro Venus series. Thanks Minis Forum for sending this over. It's a great little system. It really is. I'm actually impressed by, I, I, we need laptops. We need more laptops in the market based on this. Recently took a look at the, a Razer laptop based around basically the same platform. This is the, 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 the even higher end version of that CPU, eight cores. It comes to us with a lot of performance, a shocking level of performance in just two or three generations for mobile. I, I, I can't believe mobile processors are already at 11th gen desktop performance at, again, a tiny fraction of the wattage. As we look at the idle power here, eight watts, the system's not doing anything. Even under full load, it's still peaking at 70, 75 watts, give or take. It's pretty impressive. I'm Bottle, this is Level 1. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums.